Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ramsey and this is going to be another episode in our series about building effective agents. So last time we looked at routing, where we had an LLM intelligently judge where to route a particular task depending on the type of the task. This time we're going to look at something slightly different. We're going to look at parallelization, where we can have tasks running in parallel based on um, a predefined number of criteria or task types. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So we have parallelization here. And the basic idea behind parallelization is running multiple LLM calls at the same time. So you would have some kind of input and that input would be routed to um, different LLMs and then some kind of aggregation would happen and then you know you have an output that goes on to further processing. Now the idea here is that you're trading engineering complexity for lower latency or higher reliability. Now what do I mean? So for example imagine that you had a single LLM call instead of three different LLM calls as in this image and then you would tell this LLM to do these three different tasks. Now you're going to get a slower LLM call, like the latency is going to increase basically because you are consuming more tokens. You're giving the LLM more tokens to process and therefore it's going to take slightly longer. But you're also going to get a lower reliability because the more tasks you give an LLM to perform, an AI model, the less reliable it's going to be overall. So if it has, say, um, I don't know, 90% accuracy on a task and then you give it three different tasks its overall accuracy is not going to be 90% it's going to be 90% of 90% of 90% so let's say um, if it's three tasks so 90% that's first one is 90% second one would be something like 81% and then third would be uh, I don't know what's that 83 freaking 82.9 percent accuracy the accuracy reduces as you can see but if you split the task among three LLMs and each maintain the accuracy of 80 percent or 90 percent then overall you kind of maintain that accuracy in the system so that's what I mean by reliability now there are two different flavors of um, uh, parallelization the first one is section where you split a problem into independent chunks and these chunks run in parallel. So this is great for different uh, applications. One is guardrails, where for example, you could have say some kind of like user message coming in and then different LLMs like um, analyze that user message for different metrics. So one checks if it's safe according to some content policy, another one checks if it's relevant and so on. You could also use it for batch processing. So if you can split a task and you can have um, the task, uh, the subtask run in parallel, then you can scale up your system in this way by um, doing um, more and more complex tasks. You can also do automated evals. So an eval is just an evaluation. So say you have like an LLM output and you want to judge it for accuracy or quality. And then you can have like different LLMs judge it on different metrics so one checks the tone another one maybe checks the relevance etc etc and then you aggregate these somehow afterwards the other flavor is voting voting is where you ask several llms the same question so you know like you have different experts and you ask them the same question and then you either pick or you merge the best answer so you could have a content or code review and then, um, so like if it's a piece of content, you pass it to different LLMs, one checks SEO, one checks um, accuracy of the content, the other one checks the sources to see if they're valid, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, you could either aggregate this, the score programmatically, or you could have a judge LLM, like look at this and like generate a report on, you know, the state of that content, or the quality of that content or whatever, right? Um, and, you know, so the reason why I use the knife for sectioning and the ballot box for voting can be kind of like encapsulated in this quote down here, sectioning slices, voting hedges. Voting is about getting a, a, a sort of aggregate answer based off of like 
measurements in diff on different metrics while sectioning slices a task and has the subtasks done in parallel. So we're going to do a demo of this just to you know give you an idea of it, right? So um, we're going to take some posts from an RSS feed, specifically Hack and News. And then, I mean, just to give you an idea, so if we weren't doing this with parallelization, we would have taken those posts and then given them to um, uh, an AI model through a single LLM call. And maybe we'd ask it to summarize each post, tag each post with the topic. So if it's AI or business or hardware or something like that, and then give a moderation flag. So is it safe or unsafe according to some policy? And then we'd pass it on for further processing. Now, this is a simple system, as you can see, it's like a three node system, but it's also slow. Well, not too slow, but a bit slower than if we were doing parallelization because it's, you know, um, um, a single LLM call with more token size. You may not notice this in NHN, but it, it becomes more apparent in like um, um, application systems where you can run like things in parallel. In NHN, you might notice it more if you do it at like the workflow level. So if you were like the LLM calls like web webhook triggers to workflows, then you could run them sort of in parallel, you could kind of come up with a workflow for that. But on the at the node level, nodes don't run in parallel, they run in sequence, so you may not notice it, but it's a really useful um, design pattern for agents to know, because even if you're building in code ever, it would help and it would actually, you'd actually see the speed um, or, or, or the speed gains, um, the, the latency gains, sorry. So, um, and it's also error prone, of course, because you're giving the LLM more and more tasks. But after parallelization, you'd have the RSS feed, and then for each post, you'd you know, pass it on to a different LLM for a different task. So one does the summary, one does the tagging, one does the moderation, and then you'd merge these outputs somehow, and then you'd take them on for, for the processing. It's a more complex system because there are more nodes involved, but it's faster, a little bit faster. Again, you may not see these speed gains a lot in NA10, so you will see the reliability gains, but you would see the speed gains in a more programmatic, in, in a more, um, in a lower level system with like code and stuff. Um, and it's also more reliable. So I've already mentioned that. And so we're going to jump right into it and build it. I already did a, a, a build of this, you know, just using the three uh, um, LLM calls and a merge node. So I'm just going to like recreate that. So first, of course, we need a trigger. And for that, we um, are going to trigger it manually for simplicity's sake. And then um, we're going to need an RSS um, node. So NA10 does have an, a native RSS node. Specifically, we're going to use the RSS read and we need a URL. So like I said, I'm going to go to Hack and News. The RSS feed can be found at hnrss.github.io, specifically the search feeds endpoint which is this one, and it allows you to add a query. So I'm just going to um, copy this and paste it here. And then I'll turn the query into something like um, OpenAI. So, you know, all news about OpenAI. And then we're going to test that step. And you can see we're getting results. So like um, the creator of the post, the title, the link, um, the content, the content snippet, which is just a truncated version of the content and so on. And now um, we're going to rename this to like pull RSS feed. It's really good to document your work as you go. So if you're working in a team, other people can sort of make sense of it later. And then we're going to have um, an AI node for doing the summaries. So we're going to go to AI, open AI, message a model. And um, of course, you'll set up your credentials. As usual, I'll leave a link in the description for how to set up um, your OpenAI credentials in NA10. And then we're going to message a model. So for this one, I've been playing around with GPT 4.1. I think it's really great for these summaries. So I'm going to take 4.1, um, where is it? This one, so I'm going to take the latest version. Um, and the prompt is just going to borrow from the workflow I already built. So write a punchy 15 word headline that captures the core idea and then you feed it the title and the link. So I'll just copy that and paste it here. And actually, instead of the title, I'll just feed it the content so that it has more context to generate a better title. 
And then um, this is a really cool place to um, introduce this idea. So you can set the output randomness via the temperature. So this like is a number between zero and one. And the higher it is, the more random the results, so the more creativity sort of that the um, um, AI model infuses into the output. So I don't want it to be too creative. So I'll put it at 0 0.7, which is just good enough for like a nice punchy headline. Um, and let's see what kind of results we get. Great, so you can see, um, oh wow, it's talking about a Twitter link and gives this result, okay. Okay, that's interesting. So you could tell it um, um, if the link doesn't work, fall back to the um, content output only the headline so this is like you know like learning prompting in real time right here you know sometimes it's good again it's real always good to test um, each node especially AI nodes and know how you can tweak the prompts to sort of get a good result Great, great. Now it's, it's, it's doing a good job. Awesome. So we have that and we're just going to rename this um, to um, summarize, right? Or summary, whatever. And then we're going to have a set node. So the set nodes work is going to be to pull, um, to pull this, this content. So we're going to have like a variable in there going to call it the summary and then the value will be this content and also you know just for future processing i think it would be useful to have the link to um th that comes with each rss feed and for that we're going to pull directly from the rss read node and we're going to pull the link sorry the link in there right so this just like allows us to set some important variables that we can use later so there's a summary and link coming out of each which is awesome, right? So um, we're going to call this a set summary and link. Great, great, making good progress here. Next, we want to tag each post with the topic. So we bring this in and we're going to use an open AI messenger model node. And for this, since tagging is a simple task, because you know, it's just like tagging with a topic, you don't need an expensive model. You can go for something smaller, like maybe GPT-40 Mini or GPT-4.1 Nano, actually like Nano, that's really cool. And then for the prompt, we'd pull from here. So um, the prompt would be from the headline and snippet below, choose one tag from AI, business, hardware, policy, other, and return the tag only. And then you feed it the title and the content snippet. Remember the content snippet is like um, a truncated version of the content. And then we put that in here, right? And for the temperature of this, since it's something that we need to be deterministic, like the topic setting, we'll choose um, a lower temperature. So we'll set it at 0 0.3. And now we should be getting the tags. Great, now you can see it's tagging them. Of course, they're gonna be AI. This, this one that's just business, awesome. Policy, this is great. This is great, okay. So we have that working just fine. Now what we do next is we add a set node again to set some important variables in this case we're going to have a tag variable maybe a, a topic variable let's let's do that let's call it that and then um we're going to pull in the content from the ai node now we have the list of topics coming in which is really cool so we have that and then we can rename this to set topic so let's see set topic and this will be um tag with topic i don't know whatever so tag with topic and then set topic okay 
Now we need to do moderation. So we have another open AI node. And here we're going to message a model again. And because you know that the moderation flag isn't something complex, you can use the nano, for example. We'll borrow the prompt from the workflow I built earlier, and that would be classify the following hack and use item as safe or unsafe under open AI policy. Return safe or unsafe only. So there we go. And again, for the temperature, we are going to set something low. So it's deterministic and repetitive can sort of predict what we're going to get great now you see it's tagging them as safe or unsafe and then of course as usual we are going to add a set node and this one is going to pull in the moderation flag and the value will be whatever content is coming from the open AI node and now if you test that, you'll see that we're getting a moderation flag for each. Now we are going to, um, we're going to uh, rename this as set moderation flag. And then this will be moderate. Yes. right now from there you need to merge these right you need to merge them so you add a merge node there's a native merge node in there and specifically what you want to do is you want to combine the outputs and you can use matching fields which we can talk about um, one day when we can dive deep into merge field i mean it's just like literally about like having a field like so if they all had an index field you'd merge based on that but like what we really want to do is merge by position so we'll take the first output from the first um open ai node combined with the first output from the second open ai node and the first output from the third open ai node and so on so we're going to have three inputs for this and we are going to just wire them up. Of course, some symmetry would really help here. Great, great, that works. And now we can test this step just to see what we're getting. It's going to execute previous nodes, of course, but in a minute, we're supposed to see what the merge results will going to look like great and now you can see oh wait why does it say no output data returned that's weird okay let's let's try it again great now we get what we want so the summary is there the link the topic and the moderation flag for each of these and that's it guys that's an example of how parallelization would help you split tasks the, in this specific example we used um, the sectioning flavor of parallelization though you know maybe even in a in a future episode you can let me know in the comments we could do a voting um, demo but this is how you would split a task um, via parallelization and, 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 and have an a time process it for you Next time we'll look at something else, but I'm glad to have you guys here with me. Let me know what you think about the episode in the comments and what you'd like to see in future episodes. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.